So two kilograms. Yeah, I think it might be 14 here, 14 ounces or something like that. I, I don't know. It's a small drone. Yeah, 20 kilograms is huge. Wow. That's a big drone. And when I say coffee cup, I'm talking about a styrofoam coffee cup. I'm not talking about a glass one. Anything over, over the weight of a, a styrofoam coffee cup has to be registered. So basically things that aren't paper airplanes. Um, even my little microplanes, a lot of those with the battery, they're heavier than that. So 20 kilograms, yeah, would be like the size of a six-year-old kid, right? Doesn't matter. They still have to be registered. You guys can you can you can say it any way you like. You could call it an ROV. You could call it a an RC plane. You could say it's um, uh, a tethered a radio tethered aircraft. I mean, however you want to call it. If it flies and it's got a radio, it has to be registered. <laughs> They're con the the government considers them experimental aircraft. They consider them small UAS, which is an unmanned aircraft, and you have to register them. So I'm not making the rules up. You're welcome to go look on the FAA website yourself and see what the regulations are. But pretty much any, you know, if you do RC, you pretty much should have a registration. You only have to register once. Once again, it covers up to 30 aircraft. Most people don't have that many. Um, so you only have to have one registration number. Yeah, pretty much, Taylor. If it flies, it has to be registered. So it doesn't matter if it's specifically a drone or if it's a Corsair Warbird or a Pitts biplane if it's got a radio and it flies without a without an actual physical tether you got to you have to register it so yep yeah they do uh one of the things that they're doing and this is I learned this this summer I actually um Looked into getting my to getting into agricultural drones with my friend Chris. Uh, we did a couple months worth of research on it. Uh, we found that the farmers just aren't doing it yet. Um, it's not worth getting into. What's and the other issue is this. Um, I know, and I know they're not drones. I I know that, but that's what they're called. That's what we call them, and the FAA classifies them as drones. I mean, come on. My RC airplane with a 16-inch wingspan is not a drone. <laughs> But it's classified as a UAS or an SUAS, so small unmanned aircraft system. Yes, no gaming nerfer, not a car radio, a radio to control it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess technically you could hurt somebody with that, so maybe you would have to register. <laughs> Uh, I did not land. I'm really bad at current events. Uh, I don't know what happened in Arizona. But let's just leave it at that. Are you talking about that David Lee Roth concert thing where he did a really horrible edition of Jump and... <laughs> or not that. <laughs> oh, that was in California anyway. Yes, it is for two purposes. Actually, one purpose. Accident reporting. Yeah, pretty much, Red Alpha. Under the right, it, it is it, pretty much with a radio. If it broadcasts, yeah, you probably you probably could classify it. Um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't know. But we'll we'll leave that off air, I guess. Um, we'll talk about something else later, maybe later, or on Moni stream because she she allows stuff like that. Um. No, I mean, Nerfer, obviously, you're joking. <laughs> hey, have a good night, VH. Uh, maybe we'll see you later on tonight, hopefully. Um, that's funny, Cordy Zitter, yeah. Uh, so anyway, what they're doing now, so we, we looked at the drone laws and the drone stuff and the farming stuff, and what happened was, um, there's two companies in Ohio that actually do drone surveys. One of them has had one job. The other one hasn't had any jobs yet. <laughs> but they're testing stuff. Now, I also met a guy that's very successfully using drones. And what he does is something very different, okay? So he um, goes flying. 
with an airplane, like a regular airplane. He goes up to 5,000 feet. He has a thermal camera that he carries with him, a little handheld camera, just like a normal camera, but it's thermal. And he flies up to 5,000 feet, and he takes a thermal image of the field all at once. Hey, what's up, Damien? Thank you for the cheer. Um, I appreciate it, and sometimes I do rock. Um, so he, uh, he will take that photograph, and then he brings it back and gets the thermal imaging of the field. He then can tell where the, the, the spots are where there's trouble. He takes a drone out with a camera and takes photographs. He flies down low over the field and gets photographs of the problem areas using the drone. Um, the reason why he doesn't like using, they make all these thermal imaging drones. They're agricultural drones. They're about $15,000. You can buy one. Um, and you can fly over your fields. It takes about an hour to do 500 acres. Okay. Here's the issue. And this is what this, this, this guy who is a farmer who's doing this successfully told me. The field changes temperature every couple minutes. So if you're trying to get a thermal, a, a accurate thermal image of the field during the day, you have to do the airplane. Using the drone will not give you an accurate temperature reading because you're not getting the temperature of the field all at once. You're doing it in patches, just like how we're seeding. The drone flies up and down the field and gets temperature readings all along the field. But the issue is that the temperature is constantly going up and down all day long. So uh, if a cloud covers the sun, the whole field cools off and you get an inaccurate reading. You have to get a single image um, from about 5,000 feet. You will never be able to do that with a drone. Does anybody know why? I'm going to wait a couple of seconds so you guys can try to answer. What's the reason why you'll never be able to do that with a drone? Because 5,000 feet, drones can fly that high very easily. Why can't you do that? What? No. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sarge is going for some ham. That's not the answer I was looking for. Speaking of ham, it's a piggy farm. Illegal. That's correct. Now, Red Alpha knows something about the rules. What I'm going to tell you is this. 400-foot ceiling. Thank you, Brickyard. The drones in the United States of America, and I don't know about the rest of the world, but in the U.S., there is a 400-foot ceiling limit for drones. So if you go, uh, civil airspace starts at 500 feet. So um, at 500 feet up, you could run into a Cessna. That's right. Exactly, Lan. There you go. So you're not allowed to fly that high, and that's the reason why we don't do that. So um, you will, you'll always have to have a real airplane to do that. You'll never be able to do that with a drone, legally speaking, unless you get a waiver Waivers are a pain in the butt to get, uh, but you could get, theoretically, a waiver from the FAA to fly that high and let them know this is the, the area that we're going to be flying, uh, but can you imagine trying to get a waiver every time you try to do a job? I mean, it takes 90-plus days to get a waiver from the FAA, so that is just a nightmare. Yeah, you could just do it, and <laughs> if you get caught, it's like a $25,000 fine, so <laughs> are you going to Marquis now, Rye? Have fun, buddy. Are you coming back tonight or you don't know? Okay. Yep. Yeah, flight, flight plan, right. But I think you have to file a waiver in order to get that flight plan approved. So. <laughs> well, once again, the registration process. Hey, we'll see you, Ryan. I love you. Um, the registration process is simple. Uh, they do it because um, if there is some kind of incident where the drone flies away and crashes into somebody's airplane or you're at a concert and you're filming when you're not supposed to and you're flying directly over the audience, which is illegal, by the way, um, that tail number on the drone allows the authorities to know and register or accurately track the issue that's been caused. Um, you could lose your, your drone certification for doing something illegal like that. And they have a record of what drone did it, who the manufacturer was, um, why, you know, they'll look into, they'll, they'll actually be an NTSB report. They'll look into why the uh, aircraft flew away. Um, so, yeah, they're going to they're gonna look into, the, into all of those things, and that needs to have a serial number with it. So that's why you have to register them. And, you know, they want to know who's flying what. You know, they do keep eyes on us, you know, 
part of it is, I'm sure, a terrorist thing. I'm sure they're watching for terrorists. Say, I just registered these RC airplanes. But in general, honestly, if you're a terrorist and you're going to blow up a building with an RC airplane, you're probably not going to register it. So, uh, But they like to know who's got what, you know. So like I said, I have, I have a, a blanket registration for my toy airplanes. All my RC airplanes are registered with the FAA. I've got a tail number for them. I've never been asked to look at it. Nobody really cares, but I've got it in case something ever happens. I am also certified under Part 107 to fly a drone commercially. So, And my, my actual drone has a separate tail number from all the others. Um, so it is uh, registered with the FAA as a commercial drone. Well, if they catch you, Taylor, though, you could be, once again, if you have an unregistered drone and you're doing illegal stuff and they catch you, there's $25,000 fines to that or more. Somebody was, somebody flew a drone over a national park, um, was a commercial company. Uh, they were not registered and they got caught, and I think it was like $450,000 in fines. So you don't mess with it. You just register. <laughs> they, will, they will prosecute if you're caught. You probably won't get caught, but if you do get caught, and especially in a national park, they will actually send a police helicopter to knock the drone out of the air. I've seen them do that before. Uh, I mean, gave me nerf for <laughs> once again, technically, I, I'm not even going to answer that. <laughs> uh, I mean, no, I mean, sure. I don't know. It depends on how far off the ground. You're not going to get very far off the cliff though. So you, who knows? I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Red Alpha. Can you imagine a flying car accident where the cars crash into the, into somebody's house or something? If your drone crashes, just throw the controller and run. Oh, my God. Oh, Taylor. I mean, you could do that. Sure. You could. But what they're doing now, just so you know, hey, what's up, Aviation? They are also keeping track of where the drones are sold. So if you buy a drone from Best Buy, um, Best Buy has that drone registered as being sold at that location. They can go back and see through that through that paper trail um, who bought the drone. So you'd have to send one of your friends to buy the drone because <laughs> they would and they would come to them and say, hey, we saw you bought this drone. This drone crashed into the you know Statue of Liberty and broke the torch off. And, uh, you know, and he's going to rat on you because he doesn't want to go to jail. He'll be like, no, Taylor did it. Um, so they can track you through the sales number. So each of those drones is already partially registered because they keep track of where they're sold and who they're sold to. So. Yeah, that's true, Cordy. Yep. That is true. And no, I didn't sub to your channel yet, Aviation. I'm sorry. I'm really bad at that stuff. I will, I promise. I'll do it right after stream. You have to remember you have to remind me. I'm terrible at doing stuff like that. I think Moni was telling me today, I'm not she's my fiance. I don't know that I'm subscribed to her channel. She said, You're not subscribed to my channel, and I'm like, Yes, I am, I think. <laughs> Because I never have time to watch YouTube, to be honest with you. I basically have time to make and post videos and, and, and then live a nor my other not-so-normal life. <sighs> well, a big, a big drone to knock off. I know, I was just being silly, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to buy that. You know that. <laughs> There, there's for they'll find some way to pin it on you, but you can try. I'm just saying. Uh, yes, she does. Moni has a channel called Fun and Laughter. Why are you doing what? Uh, if you crashed a plane into the RC in, or an RC plane into the Statue of Liberty or any building on purpose, let alone it's a national park, so you shouldn't be flying there anyway. Uh, yeah, there could be jail time that you definitely would get into big trouble that would be big big trouble you're really not supposed to fly when there's anybody around um, and most responsible RC pilots would never do something like that but 
Yeah, that does happen sometimes, Red Alpha. I've had that happen too. <laughs> Taylor, you're putting an awful lot of effort into this. I'm getting a little bit concerned. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried about you right now. Yeah, it would definitely be considered an act of terrorism. You could get in big, big trouble and definitely jail time and maybe lifetime imprisonment. So, I don't have my phone, Babs. My phone's dead. Hold on. <laughs> you guys are goofballs. Get Mo, that's right. Hold on one second, folks. Anyway, um, yeah. Hey, what's up, Kalim? Max flight night or you mean height is 100 meters above the train that's about the same yeah it's about the same as what we have <laughs> yeah yeah that's true too yep if anytime if you fired it up anywhere but the site you can't remove the gps it's part of the that's part of the flying system there's no gps to remove and you can't fly. And the other thing is, you can't fly it without installing the app on your phone either. You have to have the app running to fly it. So, yeah, you'd have to have it on another phone. I mean, there's just there's all kinds of ways that could ensnare you. <laughs> oh, Nerfy. Build your own drone from scrap. Yeah, you could do that. Uh, there's lots of places that make drone parts. You could definitely buy ESCs and all that stuff. But once again, uh, I mean, honestly, if you're that much effort, to be honest, you're not going <laughs> to, unless you build a really big drone, you're really not going to do that much anyway. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, I have nothing to do with this. I'm just saying. You said there are ways. <laughs> Also, I could fly my drone. <laughs> you better be a good pilot at that point, because the first time you pick up a drone and try to do something with it, you're probably going to crash it anyway, so. No, he's not. Look at these nice plowed fields. Hey, what's up, Bin Pin? Taylor said possibly. By the way, uh, VH has the leaderboard for the week for cheer. He's at uh, 6,000. My lovely fiance is in second place for 3,000. And Chappy Chapman has 190. He is in third place. <clears throat> there you go, Aviation. We saw it the first time. Honey. Don't double post. Yeah. How the heck do I reply to that? Well, how much does she want? Well, this is what I'm not getting. And then she tells me that I've overpaid John whilst I've been away, and that's why we're going to do the horses for me for free whilst you're here. Well, send her that. Say, what are you talking about? You just told me this, and now you're telling me this. I, I'm totally confused right now. And se send her, here's the message that you sent me last week. Now I'm totally confused. What are you talking about? And the point is that I was only supposed to be paying John £82 whilst I was over there. Because, you know. Right. Why am I paying him back now? That's crazy. Oh, same thing here, Kaleem. We are not allowed near buildings and stuff like that. Yep. That's right. That's right. That's right, Matt. You. Hey, what I... <laughs> I had that happen one time at work. One of the, There was a dude that I worked with. He was hacking into uh, the... F, the, uh, the He was hacking into the... Um, the U.S. Uh, database, like the government database, and he got caught. He was at work, and then all these FBI agents came in and just took him out. We were like, whoa. <laughs> uh, I am very excited, Ben Pin, and I found out. Can I tell them the surprise that you had for me, Moni, that I blew? Yeah. Yeah. Moni got us first-class train tickets back to um, to her home uh, from the airport, so we're actually going to be riding in first class on the train. I'm super excited. It's going to be so much fun. 
What did I do with the washer, honey? Do you remember? Yeah, that's true, Red Alpha. It was hard for me, but I'll tell you what. I've, I learned to become a good pilot by practicing on simulators. And because of that, I've only lost one airplane in the crash, and that was because of a radio failure. Uh, I still have a vast majority. Actually, all the airplanes that I started with, except for maybe one or two. So that's okay, QWERTY. I do have a washer. I don't know where I put There it is. Okay. <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> He said, you're all done. No, drone discussion is fine. Any kind of flight discussion. We have a lot of aviation fans here. No pun intended. She said, hold on, guys. There's someone knocking at my door. Yeah, pretty much. I probably already am anyway, but... I know I'm excited. It'll be fun. He said, bye, Taylor. It was nice knowing you. Oh, my. Yeah, well, the nice thing is, Lan, here's the big thing. And uh, check out my channel on YouTube. Go, to, go down all the way to the bottom. Uh, when you go to the main page there, you'll see that there's a bunch of RC airplane videos that I've made. Most of my airplanes were under $100 or around $100. I have one radio that I use for all of them, and they come ready to fly. They come with all the things that you need to fly. Um, and it is, it's really not that bad. Uh, if you get a good training aircraft to learn on, um, once you learn how to fly, you won't crash very often if you're, if you're good at what you do. And I, I, like I said, I never crash. Sometimes I have rough landings and stuff like that, but um, I don't, I don't crash very often, so... That's right. That's right, Taylor. <laughs> Pretty much. You said all clear, just the neighbor. I know, Bin Pin. I do have too many farms. Uh, yeah, Cordy Zitter. We are. <laughs> uh, we are using the two a pair of six thousand uh, six series M tractors from New uh, New Holland from John Deere. This is an all John Deere farm. You can see I've got the John Deere harvester back there. Um, Two a.m. eating ham sandwiches. That sounds like me last night, except for it was a bowl of potato soup. Ew. That's all I got, baby. It's better than nothing. Actually, where was it? Salad. I know. I'm broke. I'm down to canned food right now, which is horrible for you. It's all salt. Where's this? There we go. The B-52 bomber flying the AA. Yep. Cool airplane. Yeah, the 6R is definitely a better tractor, but I couldn't afford that if I wanted two of them. So we did one, uh, one or two 6Ms. Corn dogs. Those are so bad for you, too. Oh, I love corn dogs, though. You know what I like? I like those little uh, cocktail wieners in, in the wrapped in a croissant. Oh, pigs in a blanket. Man, they're so good. Speaking of pigs, right over there, piggy pigs. And we're going to see this. Yeah, the 6R is a beastie tractor. Repair. Tab, 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 tab. Nope, nope, can't tab, so. <laughs> uh, I We did these tractors because I like John Deere and it's in the game now. So uh, I have to have at least one farm with some John Deeres on it. Um, Moni does love Ma Massey is Moni's favorite tractor company living off of spam yeah that's where I'm at right now so you love shrimp okay <laughs> lasagna for dinner I'm, I wonder if I can get both of these in here or not but this is where they're going to have to go alright so we're going to run down and rent a roller So Moni, what do you have to say about the the um, the fast food in America? 
it's edible. Is it pretty much the same as what you guys have in the UK? Yeah. Like nothing special? No. There you go. There you go. So there you go, Sarge. Now, what did you think about Arby's, though? Arby's is good. Arby's is excellent. Arby's is, well, the closest thing to heaven that we'll get on Earth. Uh, eh. no. Yeah, it's not. No, you're right. I'm the closest thing to heaven. Yeah, we have been been pinned to the whatever we want to eat diet. That's right. What's my favorite food? <laughs> My absolutely most favorite meal of all time is Carabas. Um, it's the uh, uh, veal, the veal chicken, chicken parmesan. Sorry, not veal, uh, chicken parmesan, and uh, with the bread. And I like to get the Alfredo noodles instead of the um, tomato sauce noodles. Oh, it's so good! I think the taste quality is the same. Uh, the menu choices this is the same though. We get more French fries than, than they do in, in uh, the UK, but the food tastes exactly the same. What I've heard about John Deere is that people don't like them because you can't really fix them yourself. But what farmers do like about John Deere is that they have um, pretty much instantaneous support. So when something breaks, within a half an hour, the dealer is out there and they've got it fixed and they've got it running. Um, it, it, the, the response time for support is immediate, and that's why farmers tend to go for John Deere over other brands. They don't have to wait for a part. It's, it's in stock. And uh, I've heard several different farmers on YouTube that use John Deere say that's why they like them. It's not necessarily that they're better made or um, that they're, you know, like a, a stronger tractor, though a lot of them think that they pull harder for less horsepower. Um, but they say that um, the big the big deal is that the support is there. You just there's a person at your farm within an hour fixing the tractor and getting it back up and running. That's the big difference. Hang on one second, folks. I got to turn a bedroom light on here. It's getting dark as the sun went down. I am now in the dark. So I don't know. Once again, I'm not a farmer. I don't know for a fact that that's the case, but. I think you'd have to look that up online and see if that's that um, if that's an actual uh, fact or if that's just somebody that doesn't like John Deere saying that oh they break down more often. Um, so I don't know. I, you'd have to once again you'd have to look at statistics and That's, uh, that's something that you'd have to check online. I don't know the answer to that question, but I have a feeling that that was said by somebody that doesn't like John Deere. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's, that may not be an actual fact. Uh, Did you read the reply I sent her? Yes, yes, yes. And? I mean, you told her the truth. Did you send... I've sent her the screenshots as well, because you know what she's going to come back with. Yeah, like she doesn't believe it. Yeah. Um, but you need to, I would also send her the message that she sent you and say, well, but you said this last week and now I'm totally confused as to what, what's going on. Cause that's real confusing. Honestly, you said my favorite, you said now case, that's another story. My favorite meal is beef and broccoli. I will say I've seen a couple case tractors totally burnt to the ground. <laughs> uh, more than one actually, uh, around here. Uh, that doesn't mean that there could have been anything. Could have been a bale fire. Could have been anything. But I did see. Um, in the last year, I've seen two case tractors burnt out. Um, like the shells completely burnt out. But beef and broccoli sounds good. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely there's definitely people that are angry with them about about the difficulty in repairing and setting settings on the tractor. Uh, they don't like the fact that they have to go um, and get, you know, the dealership out every time they have to make a change. But um, uh, oh yeah, I saw that Red Alpha. Yep, that was a good video. Remember, we were watching that video. Remember, Moni? Which one, darling? The millennial farmer, where he was comparing the the Challenger to his John Deere. Yeah. He had the opportunity to buy it, too, and he decided not to, so. A bird nest fire? Oh, yeah. Well, that's not the case's fault. <laughs> that's the fire's fart. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Taylor, too. I don't know anybody that owns a John Deere that doesn't like it. Pretty much they all love it. So, 